Hello and welcome to another edition of Living Life. We're so glad you could join us. Uh, you know, earlier this year, uh, the world experienced uh, more devastation as we saw the typhoon uh, that wiped out um, tens of thousands of people uh, throughout the Philippines and still thousands uh, died and are missing. And there's so much horror that we see in these types of disasters that are becoming, unfortunately, a lot more frequent around the world. Uh, some say it's climate change, some say it's uh, different factors. But one thing that we can know is that this world definitely is broken and not the way that it was intended to be. But how do we as believers uh, respond to and how are we supposed to look at these disasters that come around us with so much suffering? You know, fortunately the Bible is actually very clear on how we need to view suffering and how we need to live our lives uh, in spite of it and also through it. And that's one of the encouraging things that we will learn in our passage today. So no matter the storms that you may be going through today, know that there is hope and that hope is found through His Word. Second Corinthians 4, verses 11 to 18. For we who are alive are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, so that his life may be revealed in our mortal body. So then, death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. It is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. With that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you in his presence. All this is for your benefit, so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Therefore, we do not lose heart. Though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. For what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. You know, one of the most important things that we need to do when we're going through suffering and trials is to be able to see our suffering uh, in light of the suffering of Jesus. Uh, and that is one of the key factors of us being able to still maintain our faith in the midst of our pain. Uh, look at verse 11 and 12 of 2 Corinthians 4. It says, For uh, we who are alive, are always being given over to death for Jesus' sake, uh, so that his life may also be revealed in our mortal body. So then death is at work in us, but life is at work in you. And so he is saying that all of these things, have been, though they have been given to us, we must look at it in light of the fact of Christ's suffering and death was done for us. And you know, when I read stories about the persecuted church around the world where they're suffer, they suffering because of their faith in Jesus, uh, what's interesting is so many prayer requests are never about please pray that the suffering will go away. They always pray for more prayer, more prayer support. They always pray for stronger faith to be able to go through it because they understand that in God's sovereignty and also in God's goodness, He allows suffering to come into our lives so that we might participate in the sufferings of Christ as well. And one of the things that uh, Jonathan Edwards, in his resolutions, always resolved to do, he says, resolved that whenever I experience pain, 
to think of the pains of hell and the torment that millions without Christ will have to experience if they don't know the gospel. And so he learned to turn his pain into a greater purposeful time of remembering the gospel and the need to share the gospel in our suffering and broken worlds. But also another person I know uh, thought of whenever he suffered, he said that he would think of the sufferings of Jesus and of how that suffering was far greater and far worse than what he has ever been through. And I think those are good approaches to have as people of faith as to how to see even our pain as being able to serve a greater purpose and function within our lives. But also with that, uh, we can embrace suffering uh, because as believers, given the gospel, we have hope in our future uh, promise that Christ has given to us. We have hope through the future resurrection that comes despite our death and despite our pain. Look at verse 13. It says, And it is written, I believe, therefore I have spoken. Since we have that same spirit of faith, we also believe and therefore speak, because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus from the dead will also raise us with Jesus and present us with you to himself. And that is the glorious promise that Christ has given to us. That no matter the hardships that we go through, no matter how difficult your hard time is right now, and even if you're fearful of death, you don't need to be. Because in Christ, what's the worst anything that anyone could ever do to you? They will, uh, they will torture you. But if we are tortured for Christ, there is great reward. So that's a good thing in the end. And... Or you might say, the worst thing that someone can do to me is they'll kill me. But the moment we die, we enter glory into the presence of Jesus. And that is a great thing. And so we don't have to fear death. We don't have to fear suffering. We don't have to fear torture. Because all of these things in the end will result in something even better. And the promise that is revealed here in this passage is that even in the worst of our day, when we die there is hope for a resurrection, that we'll be raised unto newness of life in the presence of Jesus to receive the glorious promise and the rewards that Jesus has given to us for all those who believe. And that is a good thing. And so uh, through this, as we keep our eyes upon him, uh, verse 15 also reminds us that all this is for your uh, benefit so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. And so as we live in this world and experience more and more of His grace and realize that everything is grace and everything is gift, the response from His people is joy-filled thanksgiving for that glorious truth. Therefore, we live with our eyes on eternity. Verse 16, Therefore we do not live, lose heart, Although uh, outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. So our bodies are getting old, uh, but spiritually our bodies are getting ready to be glorified in the presence of Jesus. Verse 17, For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. So all of our suffering, all of our pain is achieving for us eternal reward and eternal glory. So that there's always gain from our hardships for Christ. Verse 18, So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but what is unseen, since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. That is how we are to live, with our eyes fixed on Christ, fixed on the eternal, fixed on the things unseen, so that we would have the hope of knowing that we are His forever. And that is your hope as well, if you place your trust in Him that the best is always yet to come. Not only in the days uh, leading to our uh, death, but ultimately through our death, the greatest days are before us. That is our hope that we have in Christ. What are you focused on uh, when you are in pain? For far too many of us, we focus on the temporary pain that we experience. But when pain is combined with faith in the hope that Christ gives to us, uh, that pain will serve a greater purpose and also bring with it great reward. 
So in the midst of all of your days of suffering, keep your eyes on Jesus and remember that greater things are coming for all who hope in him. So let's hope in him today and always. Let's pray. Father, we want to thank you for the promise that we have, we have in your word, uh, that there is a glorious day coming, a resurrection of our bodies and a resurrection of our souls so that we will finally be alive in the presence of Jesus. So in the midst of all the heartache that we experience, may we keep our eyes on you, the author and the finisher of our faith. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen.